Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today is a review on Deoxit D5. So I'm going to read the can for you first. Uh, cleaner audio, cleaner video, reliable data. D series Deoxit D5 improves electronic connections, removes oxidization, improves connections, seals and protects surfaces, flushing action, safe on plastic, even lubricates stuff for you afterwards. Nice. Uh, improves performance and reliability and the company has been selling this stuff worldwide for over 60 plus years so I'm pretty sure they got a good thing going here and it's actually something that needs to be in your arsenal of chemicals for fixing stuff. I've been using this for the last couple of years myself and I've been using it on all kinds of electronics, guitars, amplifiers, computers, even freeing up sticky computer key switches that were gummy right it's like i really don't want to start popping keycaps off because something can break especially on uh, laptops they're the most delicate to pop switches off you can break something easy and they tend to be a real pain in the butt to put back together and sticky switches happen because you know people might um get a little bit of coca-cola on there somehow you know you open up your bottle and it sprays or whatever um it can get in there and gum things up this stuff will free it back up I don't know what was in the keyboard on my, my white MacBook. Um, it's actually a polycarbonate 2007 MacBook. Uh, but I had a couple sticky switches on it, keys, and I sprayed them. And pff, back to life they come, and they have not bummed up since. So, hey, works great. I took an old Fender Sidekick amp that powered on, but that's all it would do. No sound, no nothing out of it. Now, I did have to use more than normal. You are supposed to use this very sparingly, but in this case, I had to really hose them down all the controls, and I got that amp 98%. I only had two control knobs out of all of them that had just one little tiny dead spot on each one, but otherwise, everything worked fine. The amp was nice, clean sound, no problems. I've had it. I've got that amp on my channel if you want to take a look at the Fender Sidekick. Um... <laughs> that was an amp that did not belong to me. It was something that I was selling for somebody else. Um, and, of course, I told the new owner the history behind it, what I did, blah, blah, blah. Showed them, you know, there are a couple little dead spots that may clear themselves over time. They may not. But, you know, hey, if you ever want them repaired, repaired, then I'd be more than happy to do that. It's just that the person that I'm selling it for didn't want to spend a lot of money and it wasn't even working when I got it. So <laughs> at least I got it this far and it does work fantastic other than these two little spots that you might want to try and avoid. So just, you know, run the control knob back and forth and it may just clear itself up. And they were fine with that. You know, I'm an honest Joe. I, I, I'm totally 100% honest with people, um, you know, and it's something that the original person that owned it did not want to spend the money on. And I agree with that because of the value of that amp. Uh, it would cost more to fix it than what it was actually worth to sell it in the end. So it's up to the new person. Uh, but at least I did get the amp running 98% in, in my numbers. Um, and I think that was just fine. And they knew about it and they were fine with that. So, hey, it's all good. Now... I've used it for cleaning USB connections. It will do that as well. Headphone jacks, um, your mixing boards, right? Audio mixers, the faders, or rotary dials, whatever your type you have. Uh, quarter inch jacks, XLR jacks. All you do as far as jacks go is you spray a little bit, uh, say an XLR connection to a microphone, right? You spray a little bit on the female end of the plug, run it in and out of the mic a couple of times, you know, and it'll clean up those connections and restore the connection, right? Unless there's something else wrong with the cable, in which case I'd replace the cable if it doesn't fix it, and that'll probably be what your fix is in the end, because sometimes the cables do just go. Even if your solder connections are great, sometimes cables just go dead, and that's all there is to it. You, you just don't bother, right? You replace it, it's cheap. Um, but try cleaning the connections first, because it may be just a dirty connection, right? Um... <clears throat> Same thing as your quarter inch jack plug ins. Okay, those are all female ends that the plug goes into. Spray a bit on the plug, run it in and out. Same deal. Okay, headphone jack, eighth inch, quarter inch headphone jacks. Same deal. Spray a bit on the plug, run it in and out. RCA jacks, 
spray the plug on the ground and the pin, run it in, twist it back and forth to, you know, get rid of any of that corrosion stuff. It's a friction thing and you're leaving a lubricant base behind at the same time, okay? You shouldn't ever have to hose down controls, but if you're really determined to try and save some money, um, <clears throat> you may have to hose it down if it's really bad. Um, but try not to go too mental with hosing it down. That's the thing. Um, now, with my black uh, Series A Flying V guitar, you guys know, um, that had a completely seized pot, like 100% locked up, ain't nothing going to fix that, right? So we replace it. No, we sprayed the daylights out of that sucker after we removed it from the guitar because the other controls were working fine, but I gave them a little spray anyways, just as a preventative maintenance thing. So the control that I took out that was literally locked up, I mean, I had to, you know, really hold on tight and go back and forth and really, I got that thing 100% perfect running condition again, not even a dead spot anywhere. This stuff works, okay? It really does. Even I will swear by it. Over 6,000 reviews on Amazon on the one seller that sells this stuff four and a half out of five star rating on average, okay? That's pretty good. Now, you're not always gonna get away with it, okay? That's the thing. Sometimes a connection point is just done for, okay? And that's something you have to accept. This is why I say it's 99%, it's never 100%. But so far, I've had 98% accuracy out of it uh, for two controllers on that Sidekick amp. I've had 100% flawless rates on some stuff, um, you know, and I've had 99%, you know. Nothing is 100% guaranteed, but sometimes you can get perfectly working connections again. So that would be 100%. But on average, on average, I would give it 99%, okay? So take a look at this stuff yourself. Don't use chemicals like WD-40 on electrical connections. It eats corrosion is what it does. And in that petroleum oil or whatever it is that's in that stuff, okay, without reading the can, I'm, okay, um, it's going to just keep eating stuff. And it's dangerous to electronics, all right? Been there, done that, wrote the book and burned it. Electrical contact cleaner, something I used for years as well. And... I did, rightly so, use it in the wrong way, and I learned the hard way from it, especially with my own stuff. That stuff is not designed for things like switches and potentiometers. Great as a cleaner, but you need a lubricant afterward, okay? And WD-40 is not a lubricant. This is kind of like everything in one kind of deal, except it doesn't do what WD-40 does. It doesn't harm anything, and it doesn't harm plastics. WD-40 can actually eat into plastics, okay? Contact cleaner can wreck plastics as well, especially contact cleaner. All that stuff is horrifying to some things. Great for a degreaser agent, but get something on there to protect the surface afterwards and your connection points. So even in the automotive industry, I would recommend using this so that once you've taken your contact cleaner and cleaned all the sand and grit and oil and crap off the connections, open the connection, spray this stuff into the plug area, you know, run it in and out a few times and then just plug her in, away you go, okay? So that should fix your issue as long as there's no other issues. Aside from it, it should fix that problem for you. Again, nothing is 100% all the time, okay? Um, it is good stuff. It works great. And like I said, I've used this stuff on musical gear. I've used it on, on, on computers. I've used it even in some car stuff myself. Okay. I've used it in many different areas and areas where it's not said to be used in generally. I've tried it and it's worked in those too. So, you know, it's kind of a good stuff. And at $36 a can, it works great. Now there's two ways to spray this. Nozzle down, it creates a wide stream. Okay, really not focused. Flip up the nozzle, which I do all the time, creates a better pattern and you can get into other areas too. 
where it can also help you to not have to necessarily take something apart all the time, okay? With potentiometers, if you do not want to take something apart because you're afraid, you can pull the, 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 the cap off the potentiometer and you put this right up against, you're gonna have to hold it like this, right up against the potentiometer, right where it turns against the, the upper base, and you just ch -ch -ch -ch, run it back and forth, run it back and forth, ch -ch -ch -ch, run it back and forth, run it back and forth, ch -ch -ch -ch, run it back and forth, run it back and forth, about that many times, and then let it sit and baste, and then run it back and forth, run it back and forth, run it back and forth. It should fix the problem. But if it doesn't, you're gonna have to actually take it apart at that point. So <laughs> you can try and cheat. It can work, sometimes it does. If there's enough of a gap, it'll work. If not, then you're gonna still have to take it apart and spray the actual physical pot on the inside. Because there's always an access point on every potentiometer where you can actually get access to the inside guts to spray that stuff and do it properly. So, not a big deal, okay? The stuff works, I'll swear by it as well, and it's worth every bit of that $36. Now, for the average person, a can of this should last you for several years, okay? Now, for somebody like me who's fixing stuff all the time, and even a lot of the stuff I pick up used, I'm gonna have to use this stuff on it um, when I'm dealing with, with customers, etc. Uh, one can of this stuff lasted me about two years, um, roughly, um, if I remember correctly. Um, and then I bought a twin pack on Amazon because they had a deal for $38 to get two cans. That deal is not there presently on Amazon, at least not on .ca website, but I got mine on .ca and I got two cans for 38 instead of one can for 36. So now watch the sellers too on Amazon because there is a seller uh, selling this stuff for $45.98. That's a rip off. Okay, $35.99, that's on par with Long McQuaid in Canada. Now this is Amazon.ca. There are other deoxid stuff as well out there. There's deoxid fader F5, there's Deoxid Gold as well, G5 for gold contacts specifically. Um, so really good. Um, I, I would say the Deoxid Gold would be good for uh, RAM chips to clean up RAM chip contacts. Ram, you can get random RAM errors on a computer and it's not necessarily the computer that's the problem or the RAM itself being the problem. It could just be the contacts need to be cleaned properly. Now old school, what we did was we actually took an eraser on a pencil and we would clean the contacts up that way and the, the rubber residue would build a bit of a layer and then when you put it back in, it's a nice snug fit, but then the contact pins would scrape up against the connector pins on the RAM again and clean it as it goes and creates kind of like a shielding, right? Worked fantastic, still does even today. However, not everybody thinks of these old school tricks because people aren't trained to do that stuff anymore. Techs aren't trained for that anymore. When I became a technician, I was trained for that stuff to do that sort of thing. And I'll still do it once in a while. Um, but otherwise, there is the contact gold cleaner that does a perfectly good cleaning job of cleaning that stuff off the gold contacts, pop it back in. And as long as there actually is nothing wrong with your RAM, that should have fixed your problem and you shouldn't see those errors again, unless it's a software related issue, which can also happen but that's a whole other ball of wax. But anyways, check out the Deoxit D5. Um, this stuff is really slick. It works in a multitude of areas. And like I said, it's about 99% on average of fixing your problem, even for a long time before you'll have to actually do the actual rip out and replacement of those parts that are giving you the hassle, okay? Um, I, I do highly recommend this stuff, so do check it out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And, you know, be sure to leave your comments below if you have any questions, comments, you know. Keep it nice and polite as always. It's all I ask. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya!